welcome YouTube family. Today I wanted to show you some of my flower gardens since they're so beautiful right now. And also, I'm going to show you how to make the easiest goat's milk cottage cheese. It's an easy way to use up goat's milk if you have too much on hand. So right now I'm going to show you my flower beds because they're so beautiful right now, so in bloom. and. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a little bit about them. This right here, this mass of flower, these are called soap wart. I think they also have another name, uh, but I can't pronounce it. And they're they're like uh, rock gar rock garden flowers, and also I think they really I think they would look so well on like uh, retaining walls falling over and cascading down the sides. I had just I had planted it by seed probably four or five years ago, but um, I just started them by seed just here on either side here over in some rocks, and they spread like crazy the last few years. These green this greenery right here this is these are lilies of the valley, and. Um, they, they already had their white little white flowers, so th those are over with. And these soap wort right here, they don't, the bad thing, they don't last too long. The, the beautiful pink flowers don't last that long, only a few weeks to a month, and then they're over with. But the greenery is still there, so that's very pretty. And these flowers right here are um, evening primrose. Our neighbor just gave them to us, and I have not, um, I have not seen the flowers yet. So I'm looking forward to see seeing them. I have some over here, right there too. And this right here is a beautiful honeysuckle. Uh, I think it attracts butterflies and bees. Uh, but every year we get these little aphids and this sticky stuff on here. So I have to spray it every year with, I have an organic bug spray that I spray on it, but uh, we like it. The children eat these, these little honeysuckle plants or flowers. And also right here I have sweet peas. They give some beautiful like pink and white flowers, but I'm not so sure that I want to grow them anymore in the garden because I've started seeing shoots all over the place, so I've, I'm just trying to contain it better. And then right up here, I have this crawling yellow trumpet uh, creeper. And it's, it's supposed to give yellow flowers, like trumpet-like flowers, but I have never seen them yet, so I don't know if they'll do that or not. And as you can tell, over here we have our garlic. It's just really, really doing well. We downsized this year, though. And along here, along the fence here, I, we planted some irises. And oh, they, I love them. They smell so good. I can't, I don't know how to say how they smell, but they just smell sweet. So, but they don't last, these don't last that long either. And for some reason this year, they got this really, um, like the leaves get really kind of crackly and brown and spotty. And I'm not sure why. If any of you know why, you can let me know. And over here, as you can see, we have a whole bunch of daylilies. And they're, they're not in bloom yet. They will be later this summer. And I will probably do another video of our garden later this summer and show you our flowers and all our veggies. Our veggies are just starting, so they're not that great to see yet, but we will definitely do another video of our garden. And as you can see here, we have, we have our grapevines and there's a lots of tiny little grapes. Can you come up closer, Avalon, and get these tiny little grapes? Avalon is doing the videoing, by the way. See right there, we have a lot of those little grapes on there. And here we have our lupins. They're almost over with, but they're still pretty. And there's a whole bunch of them spread out now. Little plants are growing up, so we're going to have a lot of lupins here in a couple years. And then we also have volunteer sunflowers that are coming up here, right along here. These are some rose bushes. We have another rose bush over there that will give some flowers. And I think that is about it for my flowers in the garden. 
and I'll take you over to our barn and show you some of our shrubs that we planted last year. So we did this landscaping last year before we did our uh, 15th anniversary celebration. We wanted some landscaping around the barn and we needed to make it all deer resistant because the deer will walk through here and they will eat the shrubs. So we tried to make it all deer resistant, although they did still eat a, few, a little bit of them. But they ate some of this, which this is a Virginia creeper. And they're, they're really beautiful. They'll, they'll grow way up here. And, but the deer ate them down a little bit last year. Um, but in the fall, they turn this purplish red color, like this flaming color. So they're very beautiful. It's like, it's just a, a nice wall of greenery. And then here I have a yellow barberry bush. I'm not sure the actual name of it, but it's a barberry. And then this is a spirea. They give these like dusty pink flowers. And uh, this flower right here is, I actually don't remember the name of them. Maybe some, some of you would know what this is, but it gives this like poofy pink flower that looks very pretty. Over here we have a purple barberry bush and in here, can you get this Wyatt? In here is a, is a hosta. I love hostas. I love uh, shade loving plants. And also we have this ornamental grass. I forget its name, but I love ornamental grass. It just gives it a beautiful exotic look. Over here I have uh, Russian sage and it does smell like sage and we trimmed it down but uh, it'll get these very beautiful spiky lavender flowers that look very pretty and this right here is a ground cover and again I'm sorry I don't know the name of it I should look it up because I really like them I love ground covers they just cover up a lot of stuff and these would be very nice in a rock garden. They spread and I've seen them in a rock, rocky path and it just looked very mystical and beautiful in between the rocks. So I might get more of these. I have another one right here that is starting to grow. Now this landscaping is right along our barn and this tree-like sh shrub, I forget what it's called. If anybody knows, let me know. But I could look it up, I'm sure, and find out. But here are more barberry bushes. And then here in these uh, old barrels, we have some more um, ornamental grass and this, this crawling greenery, which I again forget what they are, but they are perennials, so they came up again this year and are doing very well. And over here, I have more of some of the same. show you how to make some very easy and simple goat cottage cheese and now it's not going to taste like store-bought cottage cheese it's going to taste different and I can't explain how it tastes really um, but we like to eat it warm yes some of you might think yuck warm but that's how we usually eat it when it gets cold it gets a lot harder and stiffer so we usually eat it warm usually with salad or with actually with anything we have for dinner. So, Chloe, are you ready for some cottage cheese? Okay, let's get started. <laughs> um, all you need is a gallon of goat's milk. Now, if you want to make less, you can do half that. You can do half gallon and just cut everything in half. A gallon of goat's milk, you need some soda, you need some apple cider vinegar, and some salt and some butter. That is literally all you need. So we'll get started. Now, I don't know 
I don't know how it would do with raw goat's milk. I've never tried that. I don't know if you'd have to have the temperature different, but um, I only know about goat's milk. So I'm gonna dump it in this thing. Oh boy, splashed out. I'm not the cleanest cook, actually, but I usually clean up after myself. So I just put it in here and I turn the heat up um, a little over medium, medium high, and I let it sit in here um, until it reaches 195 degrees. You don't want to let it get much hotter than that because it'll boil over. And when milk boils over, it's not fun. It's a horrible, sticky, hard mess to clean on a, on a stove. So I usually watch it carefully. And at 190 degrees, I will shut off the heat and I will put in one half cup of vinegar. Now, I've done it so many times, I usually don't measure. I just put it in here until you can start seeing the curds form. So I, we will be back when this is ready to, when this is ready for the vinegar. Okay, the milk is hot. It's 195 degrees, almost 200. Actually, earlier I said 190, but I meant 195. So it is ready to go. go. So I turned the temperature off and now I'm going to just dribble in vinegar. It says to put a half cup in, but I usually just dribble in until curds start forming. See that? See those curds? So now I just quit. And I'll set it, can you see that? And I'll let it rest and let the curds rise to the top. Okay, I let it set only a minute or two. And as you can see, the curds will all rise to the top so I can easily just uh, ladle it out of there. So what I'm going to do is just take it out and dump it in this um, calendar thing here. And you let it drain. It says let it drain for a minute. I sometimes don't even let it drain that long because I, I like a little bit more juice at, with it. I could just dump it in there too but I often just ladle it out. Sorry, Wyatt, this is ginger. Okay, so I just stir it a little bit, let it drain, drain out. Just let most of the juice come out of it and then I'll just put it in another bowl and now what we do is add one half teaspoon of soda so I usually don't measure that either but I will for you and the soda will kind of neutralize the flavor and then I just sprinkle in a little bit of salt. And then last, it says to put in three tablespoons of butter. Because goat's milk is pretty lean, it's good to add some butter. And um, I will even sometimes add some store-bought cream if I want it more creamy. But it's really good with just a little bit of butter in it. Okay, it is ready. And that's all that there is to it. So simple. You just have to watch the milk so it doesn't boil over because it has happened a few times to me. 
Okay, let's see how it tastes, which I know how it tastes. Do you want to taste, Wyatt? Is it hot? Is it good? <laughs> yeah, the children love it. Yeah. Okay, you want a bite too? <laughs> Is it good? <laughs> I will uh, write this recipe in the description box below for you guys so you can just look at it there and you can try it if you want. Like I said, I have not tried it with raw cow's milk, so I'm not sure if the temperature needs to be different or if there's any difference to it. So anyways, thank you. Until next time.